Let's talk about late medieval knights using shields, how I was wrong, and how someone else was wrong. Hi folks, Matt Eason here, Scholar Gladiatorian. Now, as many of you know, I recently attended the Tewkesbury, Battle of Tewkesbury reenactment event, which is absolutely spectacular. I had a wonderful time with my friends, Drac and Lloyd and Gavin and all of the other people who were there um, on the team, uh, protecting the Duke of Gloucester as part of his bodyguard. It was all jolly good fun. Now, I'm actually here to talk about shields. Now, many of you will know that in the run-up to this, I had an intention to take the field with arming sword and shield. And for those purposes, I put my Yorkist son on my shield. I put a boss on it for reasons I'll come to in a second. Uh, and my intention was to take the field with sword and shield, but it didn't happen because I learned. And this is one of the great things. So I was wrong about a few things, but I also learned a few things. And that's the really important part here. The important part is that I learned very, very quickly that in my full harness, my harness did not work with this shield for one very simple reason, the strapping arrangement. Now, stupidly perhaps, I'd not really tested this shield with my particular armor. Now, my armor is uh, Italian export. It's based on a German painting of about 1460, but essentially it's a sort of typical Italian, what some people would call Milanese, but it's just a generic Italian style of armor of around 1460, um, if not in terms of all the decoration, in terms of the way it functions. And I, although I have symmetrical um, lower arms, my van braces are symmetrical, I do have fairly notable um, kind of uh, counters, as they're called, okay, so elbow protection wings that come up here. And moreover, I use fairly typical um, Italian style gauntlets here. Now, I had experimented with putting this onto my gauntleted arm, but what I had not thought to do was experimenting with putting it onto my fully plated harnessed arm. And I very quickly found that whilst I can, with preparation, get my gauntleted hand in here, and I can indeed get it through here, particularly if I undo the strap and then do it up, the problem is that strap really collided with the counter on my elbow, on my arm. Now, that's a kind of moderately interesting fact, I suppose, and it did mean that I couldn't use my shield, which I was a bit gutted about. Um, and I actually went on the field with a longsword in the end, and I had great fun with a longsword. Um, but it did get me to thinking. So in the run-up to Tewkesbury, the reason that I had fitted a boss on my shield is because I had seen lots of heater shields with bosses on. Right, we're going to come to, back to that part, point in a minute, but I'm going to go on a tangent. So I was recently at an event, I shan't name it, um, where the commentator said, in this period, the late 15th century, knights no longer used shields except for in the joust. And they were still used in the joust and they were used as a target in the joust, but that was the only time that they used them. Wrong! Wrong! Stop! Stop spreading this myth! Okay, so you just go to any medieval manuscripts basically and you will find there are fully armored knights or men-at-arms using shields of various sorts and i've made a previous video about this so in the late 15th century and in fact all the way into the 16th century there were numerous types of shields being used perhaps most famously in this period large pavises um, so large rectangular usually rectangular shields that could be well actually they could be small or big there were different types some of them have a spike at the bottom uh, and they're usually gripped on a bar on the back in the hand. Remember that, we'll come back to that. Another type of shield that was very popular was a buckler. And obviously a buckler is a small, um, small shield. I've got one here, there we go. Small shield that is gripped in the fist, okay? So no problems there. We can easily get a um, buckler or a pavis into the hand. But we know that strap shields were still also used. We see them particularly used by uh, Italian infantry. The rotella, which became very popular in the 16th century, so we see the rotella used, and we do still see heater shields used. Sometimes you can see what's on the back and they have N-arms, as they're called, or straps like this. 
However, something which I found curious is that when we look at late 15th century sources, we see an increasing presence of bosses. Now, many people would think of bosses as something we find on earlier periods of S.H.I.E.L.D. In the Viking era, you know, the, the early medieval period, we find bosses and they are boss script. Now, I happen to have, because I'm taking them to an event with me, a Roman scutum here. And everyone will know that a Roman scutum is gripped in the boss. That's the whole point of the boss. Your hand goes inside it, there's a handle at the back, and the boss protects your hand and provides a pivot point and everything else. It's the strongest part of the shield. So boss grip shields had been around since antiquity, okay, for literally thousands of years. And in fact, boss grip shields probably predate any type of strap shield. We do find some strap shields in the ancient period, in the Roman era, but generally most shields in the Greek and, Greek and Roman periods are boss gripped. So, with all of this knowledge, com coming back to here, I very quickly started to formulate a theory, okay? In the late medieval period, you've now got full plate harness. And if you're a knight using a shield, it becomes far easier for you to get or get off or re-get a shield that is not strapped. <laughs> and this should have been blindingly obvious, but actually I had to sort of experience it for myself, for it to really to cement in my brain just how profound that is. The fact that we start to see so many bosses appearing, even on knightly heater shields of the late 15th century, I think probably indicates that because of plate armour, and it wasn't that plate armour had made shields obsolete, shields were still used, because of plate armour, because of having arm harness on with cowters, with pauldrons, with gauntlets, strap shields are now a complete pain in the butt to get on, get off, drop them on the ground, pick them back up again, or pick up if you see it lying on the ground. Whereas a boss grip shield is frankly quite easy. So much so that even a Roman scutum can easily be held even with a late 15th century gauntlet on. And if I had my full harness on with pauldrons and cowters and everything else, I've still got no problem holding a Roman scutum. It doesn't get in the way at all. I can even quite quickly and easily get my hand out. And that's also true of the pavis. The pavis actually doesn't have a horizontal grip, it has a vertical grip usually. But these types of shields and bucklers are easy to grip if you're in full plate harness. And interestingly, when we see the strap shields, for example, the rotella, they're normally being used, not always, but they're normally being used by lightly equipped soldiers who aren't wearing plate harness on their arms, so it's not an issue. So there we go. Sometimes we experiment, and that's one of the great things about reenactment, and this is one of the reasons, as there are many other reasons, but this is one of the reasons why I love doing reenactment as well as HEMA. Because sometimes we can test out equipment in HEMA and it's a sort of perfect scenario, but when you actually put all the gear on, the period gear, and go into a reenactment context or have to walk around all day in that gear or have to see up or down or fight in melees in that kind of gear, you get insights into the equipment which you don't usually get in a HEMA setting. So quite simply, this shield is kind of obsolete to me right now. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm quite happy with the front of it, if not necessarily the, the boss. I'm certainly happy with the fitting of the boss, but I think it needs proper gilding. Um, but what I'm going to do is take off the straps off the back, or rather, I might leave the straps there actually, because they're not actually getting in the way. But I might take the pad off and fit a grip on the back, so that this can be used as a boss grip shield. And I should also add as well, I think a lot of these late 15th century shields which have a boss on are boss gripped for all the reasons that I've just said. But moreover, if you actually look at the art, very often when people are shown using them, they're being held quite far from the body, implying a boss gripped position instead of a strapped position which is much closer to the body. So there we go. You live and you learn. Um, I was wrong uh, in that, um, uh, that I made the wrong decision to keep a strap shield with my particular armour. It might work with other sorts of armour, but with my particular arm harness it didn't work at all and certainly that position of straps didn't work. But equally, other people are also wrong about saying that shields weren't being used in the age of plate armour in the late 15th century or the early 16th century. Shields were still being used absolutely loads in battles, in sieges, 
in all sorts of skirmishing, in the fencing rooms, in fencing cells, all different types of buckler and medium sized shield. Morozzo shows, shows the use of big shields, medium shields and small shields, two different types of buckler. Absolutely, between 1450 and 1550, shields were used an absolute buttload. And let's not forget that the Mary Rose, which sank in 1545, even has gun shields on it. Maybe I'll talk about gun shields in a future video. I hope this has been thought provoking and potentially even useful for some of you. I am Matt Easton and I will continue to be and hopefully I'll see you back on the channel really soon. Cheers folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers folks.